The Duchess of Edinburgh showed off her sartorial prowess at a breakfast event hosted at Cold Harbour Mill in Uffcume earlier this week. Recycling one of her slickest power suits, Sophie looked immaculate in a fabulous checkered suit jacket and matching flared trousers from Sportmax in photographs published by Devon Live. Duchess Sophie's Maresca jacket looked phenomenal on her feminine frame, defining her waist with a delicate matching belt and adding detail with scalloped lapels and pocket detailing. Her dolly trousers from the luxury womenswear brand added length to her legs with an ultra-high waist and sharp pleats. The royal swept her blonde hair into a neat ponytail, fastened with a black velvet scrunchie. She elevated her natural beauty with lashings of mascara, a honey-hued bronzer and soft peachy blush. It's not the first time the fashionable wife of Prince Edward has stepped out in the 70s-inspired ensemble. Back in May 2022, the Duchess first debuted the statement pantsuit during a visit to Ascot Racecourse. Volunteers from various charities across Devon have received a royal commendation from HRH Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, at a special breakfast event held at Cold Harbour Mill in Uffcume on Wednesday, September 20th. The event was hosted by the Lord Lieutenant of Devon, David Fursden, the King's representative in the county. The event aimed to bring together some of the 4,000 Devon charities to discuss their challenges and how the Lieutenancy Office can help them. The Duchess of Edinburgh, a patron of several charities, thanked the volunteers for their invaluable contribution to society and urged them to network with each other and local authorities and businesses to find solutions to some of the problems they face. A huge thank you to all of you for giving your time today and perhaps for some of you, for the first step towards solving some of the existing issues and moving the ball forward, she said. I think business could do more to host more of these things and to put more resources this way into helping to do more networking opportunities where you will together find solutions to some of the problems. She also highlighted the importance of reminding the statutory bodies of the value-added benefits that charities bring to society, especially in providing services they cannot or do not offer. It's important to meet, not because it's an opportunity for charities to ask for more money, but to remind those who are in charge of giving funding out through the statutory bodies of the value they add may jog them when they come to that moment of where the money is going to go. She concluded by expressing her gratitude on behalf of the beneficiaries of the charities and praising the volunteers for their dedication and compassion. I would like to give an enormous thank you on behalf of each and every one of your beneficiaries. You are the difference to them. You change and save lives and make a difference. We are so lucky to have such amazing people and all of the volunteers that exist in all of your organizations. Without our voluntary sector, our world and country would not be where it is.
David Fursden, the Lord Lieutenant of Devon, said his office was keen to support the charities in any way possible. We are all volunteers, we don't have a fund, and we don't have any money, but we sometimes manage to bring people together. This is part of what we're doing here, is bringing people together, and I hope that will be of interest and to do a bit of networking. He added that one of the priorities of King Charles III was charity and community and that he wanted his office to be involved in this area. The king himself has said to us that he has four priorities, climate, commonwealth, and his two others are charity and community. For us to be involved in this is squarely in that area. He also acknowledged the difficulty of bringing together so many charities in Devon but said he would look at the participants' suggestions and do what he could. There are 4,000 charities in Devon, so it's no easy task to bring people together, but we will look at the suggestions that have been given and do what we can. Chris Snow, who chairs the Honours Committee, encouraged volunteer groups to nominate individuals who have gone above and beyond for national honours. I bet most charities and volunteer organizations in Devon can name two people who deserve a national honor. If you can think of those people, why haven't you nominated them already? Not only are there good reasons to apply, but there's very reason why you should, so please consider it. Among the charities attending included Budley Salterton Lions Club, Age UK, Balloons, Cullumpton Town Team, Involve, Julian House, Involve, Devon Wildlife Trust, Exeter City Community Trust and Chat. Martin Hulse from Cold Harbour Mill, which hosted the event, gave an overview of the mill's history and vision for the future. The mill is a very small charity which looks after a 12-acre historic estate, and it's registered with Historic England as the most complete set of mill complex buildings from the Victorian era in the UK. It's also been producing wool continuously on the factory floor since 1797, and our volunteers and staff members continue that process to this day. He explained that the mill had launched a Vision 2032 plan last year, which aimed to bring industry back to the mill and remove all physical and financial barriers to access for visitors. Part of this process is to get rid of admission fees because what we found was a significant part of our audience that can't access the mill because of the admission fee. What we've done over the last 12 months is build a family's access to heritage program, which takes people who are at most at risk, particularly those who are using food banks. We give them mill membership, and they can bring their kids through the year. We will provide a meal for them, and they also get lots of education and learning exercises. We've just signed a deal where 100 families can get a laptop. He also said that the mill was creating workshops for artists and artisans, a business center, an industrial sculpture trail and other projects to use the estate and attract more visitors.
He admitted that the pandemic had affected the number of volunteers at the mill and other charities and appealed for more people to join them. Before the pandemic, we had about 142 volunteers doing about 30,000 hours a year. Since the pandemic, we are now at 76 and down to 12,000 hours of volunteering. The pandemic brought about a change in the priorities for volunteers, as it did for all of us, around helping people as opposed to helping infrastructure like Cold Harbor Mill. There is a slight tide change now with people coming back to help, but most people that want to volunteer who may have come and helped clean an exhibit or whatever before the pandemic would much rather go and help Mrs. Jones with her garden or take Mr. Jones to the hospital or all of those things. They are fantastic, but we are finding it incredibly difficult with our volunteer numbers reduced. Quote. 